Are you ready to say goodbye to the constant ups and downs of the artist income roller coaster? Whether you're a full-time artist who wants to increase and stabilize your income, a part-time musician who wants to go full-time, or a hobbyist who needs to fund your passion projects, this podcast will equip you with the tools, resources, and inspiration to make it happen. My name is Bree Noble. I'm a musician, best-selling author, and educator whose mission is to help musicians like you to increase the income you're already making and tap into new income streams so you can create a more diverse stable, reliable income from music, and finally ditch the starving artist mentality. Now let's dive into the Profitable Musician Show. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the podcast. This is Bree Noble. I am excited to be here with Nick Voorhees from Melody Nest. Now we're going to talk a lot about the site that they have that is super helpful for musicians at Melody Nest. But first, I want to get to know Nick a little bit and let you guys get to know him, find out how he ended up running such a site uh, to help musicians. And so, Nick, give us your background. Like, what is your background in music? What made you decide to create this site? Like, what openings did you see in the market that you were trying to fill with Melody Nest? Well, hi, Bree. Thank you for having me on your show. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I My music journey started out like a lot of people's music journey. I started playing an instrument when I was young. I started playing piano when I was six or seven. Uh, I didn't exactly want to start playing piano, but my mom signed me up. <laughs> and then I fell in love with it. And I that kind of musical harmony clicked in my brain and music just became everything to me. And I played piano quite a bit until the age of 14 or 15. I switched to guitar. I learned drums. I learned bass. I played in bands. And then I got into the electronic dance music scene where I was DJing, um, touring a little bit. And then after college, I attended Icon Collective Production School in Los Angeles and really started paving my way in the industry and just kind of tapping into new networks, meeting new people. And from there, I was working at a company and in 2017, I got laid off. And then I remember sitting in a room with friends and they were talking about how they didn't know where to go for their album art or their cover art. And I thought, hey, why don't I just make a website and put a bunch of graphic designers on it so musicians can easily connect with designers for whatever they need. And then that's the genesis of Melody Nest. It was just my friends didn't know where to go and neither did I for my own music releases. So from there, a company was formed. And that's basically the story of how Melody Nest started. Wow. I love that. That's a very specific problem. And actually, my musicians that I work with, I hear that all the time. They don't know how to create their own album or they don't want to pay a ton of money, but they mm-hmm. don't think they don't feel confident in what they can create. I know that's me for sure. I don't like to create my own art. Um, when did you decide to kind of expand that beyond just album art? That happened. That was early. That was August, 2020, when we relaunched Melody Nest with a bunch of other freelancers. And that was mostly because these artists wanted to sell and vocalists approached us, design or um, engineers approached us, music producers approached us, and we couldn't say no. So we just expanded, we built a better website, and we now offer a home for people in the music industry if they are confident that they can sell their services. Um, So it was mostly just the fact that vendors, sellers wanted somewhere to sell, and we saw the potential there. So it was just a natural expansion from just designers in the music industry to more of a holistic viewpoint of how we can connect people in the music industry. So I'm hearing August 2020, obviously that has some correlation with the pandemic. Have you found that a lot of musicians have been like, first of all, out of necessity, trying to find clients and and ways they can make money online and also like seeing that as an opportunity? Yes. The pandemic has shifted everything Um, Mm -hmm. for even just market, like the marketplace sector. If you know companies like Fiverr or Etsy or Upwork or any of these like larger freelance sites, they have grown a tremendous amount within the past year. So that has kind of excited the music industry 
and you know let artists know that hey there are resources available online um, especially niche marketplaces that you can tap into um, and that like you were saying it was kind of out of a creative necessity it's just like i have this skill set how can i make money and our job as a company is to help artists find those connections whether that's um, another individual artist or a label or a company, or even like video content creators that need music for their videos. It's, we have a hub and we shine light on where these people, where the demand is. And then musicians, uh, artists of all types can tap into these um, demands. Yeah, I can see that as really helpful for the artists too, because I think about my musicians, they want to do a music video, but they don't have any idea how to start, or they even just mm -hmm. want to do a lyrics video, but they want it to look good. And, you know, so is that the kind of thing they can go to Melody Nest for? Music videos is something we're looking into. Um, we don't, that's not something that we currently offer, but for artists that need anything related to audio or sound or design is what we specialize in. The music video is an interesting topic, but because of the nature of having to film someone in person, that's more of a meet in person kind of event. While this is purely like you can get what you need and work efficiently online um, just by communicating via text or phone calls. You don't need to meet in person to film. Um, Got it. What about like a lyrics video? That could be done. That Yes, I'm sorry. That is okay. something that we're catering for. We have designers that do lyric videos, but not music videos. Got it. Okay. And what about, say, website design? No, I, or actually we have had a designer do that. That was kind of uh, by chance. Um, there's just so many categories right. for a marketplace and it's hard to pick and choose what we think will help people the most. So right now it is sound and design, but particularly for just music releases or logos or things like that. Got it. Okay. Yeah. I just kind of wanted to get to the, exactly the things that you guys help with. So musicians know, like, I'm not going to go there for my website, but yes, I need a logo. Yes. Mm -hmm. I need album art, that kind of stuff. Um, so can you highlight, because I had my friends from Air Gigs on this podcast a while back. Can you highlight maybe how you're a little bit different from Air Gigs? Obviously, they don't, I don't think they do the design side, but are there any other ways that you're different from them? Yeah, we are different as we kind of encompass more services than Air Gigs. We have our pre-made cover art gallery. So it's very popular with musicians because as a musician myself working with designers, I didn't always know how to describe what I wanted to a designer. And also, even if I did a, what I thought was a good job of describing what I wanted, it didn't always turn out to what I wanted it to be. So we have a cover art selection that's already made. So artists can scan through it and just see these pre-made designs and then pick, hey, I like this design. This would work with my music release. And then they can get it within a day or two. Wow. So our, we were different in speed. And also where we're headed right now is we are focusing on creating a better search and discovery process. Um, as we've seen with our own website is filters only get you so far and to find the person that you really want to work with. And we think that there's potential, especially in the creative field, to connect people on a deeper level than just pre-made filters on the website. So we're hoping to uh, push something out there, which is what we're developing right now, which is a type of matching system that helps artists find the perfect fit for their needs instead of scanning the website for 10, 20, 30 minutes to find uh, that same person. So I think where we're different, like I said, is cover art, but also efficiency and speed. We're faster, um, we're more holistic, and we have a vision for the marketplace that we think is different than air gigs or say sound better. Got it. Okay, so for the musicians that are listening or watching here and they want to be able to add new streams of income, they want to work more from home. Um, have you seen artists doing that on Melody Nest? And, you know, are a lot of them just like part time getting side gigs here and there? Or are some people really making a full time income doing this? A select few are actually making full time incomes. But because we are new, we're still you know, finding our feet, so to speak. Um, but many are earning part-time salaries, essentially. So it's, it's working out for people that really care. 
like what we notice is artists on the website, if the potential clients come and message them, if they aren't quick at responding, if they don't really take what they're doing seriously, those people tend to not generate as much as those that take working online and working on marketplaces seriously. Mm. So for artists that are talented, serious, and willing to um, react and message quickly, then odds are very good that you'll find a lucrative um, home on Melody Nest. Got it. So as far as technology, um, I know that you guys talk a lot about staying ahead of the curve in technology. How do you think, how important do you think it is for musicians to stay up on technology and what opportunities could they be missing out on if they don't? Well, I think it's vital. I think something that we've seen in the music industry is that things are very fragmented still. A lot of connections are made because of people that you know. A lot of opportunities are landed because of nepotism. And I think that marketplaces like these, technology like this, is one of the things that democratizes the industry. It's if you're talented and there is traffic coming to this platform, you are just as likely to book work versus people that might have a bigger name than you do. Names don't always matter in this sector. It's just how well you can do the job. And our goal here is to just utilize the technology that we have now and to kind of bring and prop up the music industry because we've seen the patterns of just falling behind, technologically speaking, and we're aiming to keep musicians in the present. Mm, I love that. Yeah, it, we, we've got to keep up for sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, so do you see, like, how do you see the kind of the B2B, if people don't know that as that's business to business? So as musicians, we are businesses. Mm -hmm. So we are a business. And then, you know, as a musician, you're seeking out services to help you. You're also a business. So business to business. How do you see that side of the music industry, especially like the freelancer side, progressing over the next, say, 10 years? Well, I think what we've seen from the pandemic is that the freelance marketplace proves to be efficient. And that's where we believe that everything is heading. Like, of course, you're going to want to work with people that you know. You're going to want to tap into your own networks and grow them through your own means. But places like freelance marketplaces are basically just your own network that's much bigger than you not tapping into it. Um, and it just is a platform that brings in people that are more serious. It brings in clients and it just creates an ecosystem where it's fast, frictionless and personalized. It's you have a skill set and you're able to connect with people that need that skill set. And it's, there's, nothing, there's nothing new about like the marketplace idea, but the way it's being implemented now in the freelance sector itself is something that will be with the music industry for a long time. And we see it heading in the right direction. Yeah, I totally, totally agree. Because um, I have people approaching me all the time asking me, do you know anyone who does this? Do you know anyone mm -hmm. who does that? And like, they wouldn't have to wait for me to answer an email that got to the bottom of my pile or, you mm -hmm. know, have my assistant have to reach out to me or whatever. Um, and I only have a limited knowledge of people, right? So I, I love that you're kind of evening out the playing field here for musicians and the people that need the help. Yeah. Um, so can you kind of describe, first of all, let's, let's describe from the musicians and that is going to need the freelance help. Like what is their experience when they go onto the site? How can they best find the right people for what they need? Let's say I go on there and I need album art for, you know, my album and my singles. So you can just enter the site. You don't need to sign up to enter the site or anything like that. You can see on the front page, there's categories clearly listed out. There's graphic designers, and there's also a pre-made cover art selection. So if you, it depends on your needs. So if you want something quick and efficient, let's say you have a music release in like three days and your label is hounding you saying like, we, you know, if you want to pick your own cover art, great, just go do it. You have three days. So you can come to Melody Nest and just, just like I was saying earlier, scan the cover art, get what you need um, in and out pretty fast. You can purchase it before even talking with the graphic designer if you love it that much, which is actually what a lot of musicians do. Uh, they value speed in that sense. Um, and you're in and out the door once you purchase, the designer messages you, 
and you get your cover art and it's pretty efficient process. If you're looking for something custom and you want to talk with a designer beforehand, you can just go to the graphic designer category, which is one click away from the landing page, scan profiles, see their pictures, their past work, uh, their prices, and then just directly message them. And then you can communicate from there, work on the platform. You, When you uh, send your money in, we hold it in escrow. So it's where third party, uh, basically escrow count in that sense, where we hold on to the money until you're happy with what you get. And then we release the money to the designer in this case. Um, so we provide tr- like security uh, for you, whether or in a sense that if you did it on your own, it wouldn't be available for you then. Because if you're working with someone you just met, you are wiring money to someone that you've never worked with before. We kind of provide that security blanket for those that want um, a little assistance when working with others that they do not know. Yeah, I love that. I know Air Gigs does that too. And I really enjoy that process because it does make both parties feel super secure. Like I know I'm going to get my money from them and I know, you know, they know that they're going to get the right product for me Mm -hmm. uh, before they release the money. So it seems like a really great process. Um, Do you, are there ways for people to like upload things that they need, like say they want to include a photo or something into their cover art or, you know, be able to connect with like items that they need to send the designer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can upload files, pictures, um, zip files, pretty much anything that a designer or a musician needs. So in the case for designers, you can upload a photo of yourself if you want to include yourself in a cover. If you're working with a vocalist, you can send a demo to them so they can sing basically what you have written out. Um, everything from signing up communications, files and transactions and payouts and deliveries is all hosted on the site. So it's pretty much a one-stop shop and to get what you need. Got it. So who actually supports the site? Is it the, is it the designers and the, you know, people that provide the audio, um, the, the freelancers, are they paying kind of a premium to you guys Mm -hmm. to get them on the site? No, we take a small commission per transaction. Oh, okay. There's no sign up fee. It's free to sign up. You only Got it. So it's free on both sides basically, but then yes. when the transaction happens, you take a cut. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's cool. I really like that. Um and that seems completely fair. Yeah, it's also good because if you're new to the site and you don't know a lot about it, you're skeptical to pay for a service that you've never used. Yeah. You know, everyone's like that. So we don't want to charge people up front. It's just, hey, we spend a lot of time and a lot of money finding these opportunities for you. All we ask in return is a small cut. And we think that's fair. Oh, it's absolutely fair. Um, so if I were to find like a cover art in your pre-made section, is that then only mine? Like, or can other people then come along and use it? No, it's exclusive. Everything okay. that's sold on Melody Nest um, is exclusive. So you, what you buy is yours forever. Um, And if you find someone down the line is using it for whatever reason, we will fix the problem for you. Mm. Okay. That's good to know. Cause that would, that would definitely have been my first question. Like if I buy this thing, that's right here on the front of the site, how do I know that someone else isn't also going to buy it? Uh, And of course we want, you know, things as artists, we want them to be unique to us. We want them to be, you know, aligned with our brand and all that. And we don't want other people using them. So, of course. okay. So let's talk about the other side. If you are the designer, um, mm-hmm. maybe you're a musician, but you're also super talented in design and you want to expand your streams of income. How do you get started on Melody Nest? Well, you visit the site, there's join at the top, right? You just click that and you fill out a form with your, uh, your name, your, your bio, past work, the services that you want to sell. Uh, prices and your portfolio of your, whether you're, if you're a designer, it's your cover art. If you're a musician, it's your audio. And then you just sign up. Uh, It's pretty simple. And once you sign up, your profile is put within the category and people have access to reach out to you if they feel like they're a good fit. If they feel like they're a, um, if you're a good fit for them. Right. And I'm assuming you have categories like, do you have like logos and and album art and that stuff separated out and the same with on the vocal side, do you do it by genre or how do you organize that? We have filters within uh, each category. 
So if it's vocals, you can do by genre, you can do, oh, it sounds like, things like that. Uh, so it makes it easier. It's separated by the service itself. So vocalists, audio engineers, designers, things like that. But then once you're in that category, you can refine it to find a better fit. Got it. Wow. Love all this. Um, yeah. I, uh, I think that, you know, I've told a lot of musicians about air gigs, but like, why shouldn't we also be on Melody Nest, right? There's no reason we can't be on multiples of these sites. Exactly. Um, that's what's good. These sites like ours and air gigs and sound better. They don't make you sign anything that you can only exclusively uh, sell on these platforms. Uh, you're able to jump from platform to platform. Um, but the name of the game, especially for us, is who can make this service uh, as the most efficient. So it's important, like you were saying earlier about technological adoption and keeping ahead of the trend. It's important for musicians to watch how these companies are performing and selling and to make sure that they are paying attention to the one that's doing it the best. So it's a mutually beneficial relationship. Yeah. And I'm sure the technology, the matching technology is going to be huge. We because, think so. I mean, I've, I've worked with other companies that do similar matching kind of things for other services and it's mm -hmm. amazing what they do. You know, these, the, the thing that they've built really does bring in, bring the right people together. So I think that's an important thing that you guys are doing. We think so too, but I'm, I'm happy that you agree. <laughs> well, is there anything I haven't covered that musicians uh, need to know about Melody Nest before they go check it out? We've covered a lot. I think that there's a bunch of things that I could say, but I think the best way to do it is just visit the website and kind of see how these people build out their profiles, see if this is a good company, that uh, if this is a good company for you, if you're interested in selling your services. We have a, a direct messaging system right on the platform. So if you have any questions, we can uh, respond to whatever inquiries you might have. Um, and it's like we said earlier, it's free to sign up. So we are uh, a good source for musicians and a lot of artists that are looking to expand their networks and grow their careers. So we are an open book when it comes to hosting sellers. So I think the, like I said earlier, the best way is just to visit Melody Nest and just get started. Yeah. And I, I love being able to put this out to our listeners and people watching because you really get to benefit from both sides of this. If you're a musician and you want to expand your streams of income and you've got other talents, you've got talents in production or uh, vocals or, you know, uh, design or whatever it is, here's another place that you can bring in new customers. But if you're musicians and you are working on an album or you need a logo or any of that, or you need, you're producing something from home, but you don't have the right person to do, you know, this backup vocal or this instrument or whatever, this is a great resource as well. So we've killed two birds with one stone with this one. So thank you very much, Nick. Uh, I really appreciate you giving us some time today and letting me know about Melody Nest. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me, Brie. I really appreciate it. Thanks for listening to The Profitable Musician Show. I would love to know your takeaways and aha moments from this episode. Leave me a comment over at ProfitableMusician.com so I can bring you more of the information, interviews, and resources that you love. Thanks to Rondi Fay, one of my Academy members, for providing the music for our podcast. You can check her out at rondifay.com. That's R-A-N-D-I-F-A-Y.com. Just remember, knowledge is power, but without implementation, it is useless. And inspiration without action is merely entertainment. But I know you're not just a dreamer, you are a doer. And I promise I'll be here every week to support you and remind you that you can be a profitable musician. 